Ed Antietam, General Lee has Longstreet's forces north of Sharpsburg and Jackson's forces south of Sharpsburg. Stuart's cavalry is in reserve, and General Lee is having coffee at a little cafe in downtown Sharpsburg. Opposite him, we have McClellan, ready to advance on Longstreet's Corps, while he holds in the center. He'll be bringing his artillery up to the hilltops, overlooking Sharpsburg and the Confederate Army. Hooker's Corps boldly advances forward, followed by Sumner's Corps. Burnside's Corps joins the advance. The artillery is placed on the hills. Longstreet's artillery opens up on the Union artillery, causing some confusion. Jackson's artillery joins in the fun. The Union artillery is pulled from the hill. It is now mid-morning. Longstreet's artillery fires on this Union artillery to no effect. Jackson's artillery fires on the artillery to great effect. Hooker and Burnside hit the Confederate lines. The Union suffers heavy casualties, but the South is pushed back. It's late morning. The bags are deployed. The North has to keep the thrust going. Jackson's artillery fires on the advancing Union troops. Not without effect. Franklin's Sixth Corps appears. McCollum sends him around the Union right. The Union assault on the Confederate left continues. It's around lunchtime. The Union drive has yielded some result. Longstreet's Corps appears to be cracking under the pressure. Franklin's Corps prepares to relieve Burnside's Corps. But Burnside is not ready to give up yet. And Jeb Stuart rides in to save the remains of the Confederate lines. Longstreet reforms his line. Sumner rallies his troops and prepares to join. Hooker's men burst out of the West Woods and hit the Confederate lines south of their positions on the hill. The reorganized Union artillery appears on the hill. Porter creeps his men forward. Hooker's drive north of Sharpsburg. The grape from Longstreet's artillery drives off the first assault and plays with devastating effectiveness on the following assault. The cavalry assault on the flank runs down Burnside's exhausted troops and proves Stuart's worth. It's now mid-afternoon. The North rallies and reorganizes its line. Burnside backs his men up against the Potomac. Franklin's troops join the line. Mansfield's Corps prepares to cross the bridge at Porterstown. A.P. Hill's Corps arrives to hold the line. And the Union artillery opens up. Hitting Jackson's artillery heavily and he pulls it back. Longstreet deploys bags and rallies his line. In the heat of the midday afternoon, other than the barrage by the artillery, both sides enjoy a respite from the violence. It's now late afternoon, almost dinner time. Hooker's troops charge the line. Undaunted, Birdside drives his remaining troops into the southern lines. Franklin's Corps prepares to follow up with any success that Burnside achieves. A.P. Hill moves to protect the bags and patch any hole in the lines. And D.H. Hill's division swings through Sharpsburg and hits the Union assault in the flank. Jackson rallies his artillery. Mansfield's Corps occupies the sunken road. Union artillery fires to relieve the pressure on the Union flank. Undaunted, the Confederates press forward. Union artillery fires on Confederate troops. To no effect. Sumner joins Hooker in the assault. It's almost dinner time and it looks like lead will be on the menu. In heavy fighting, the South is dislodged from the hill. But D.H. Hill's flank attack saved the Confederate troops outside of Sharpsburg. Burnside's exhausted troops encountered a few small detachments of southern troops, and they simply faded away. It's now early evening. Franklin's Corps makes its assault. Sensing the Union is weak in the center, A.P. Hill's division charges the hill. Elsewhere, the Confederate troops rally. Mansfield charges the troops in front of Sharpsburg. The Union artillery opens up on the Confederate line. 
firestorm that drives back the Confederate artillery and even Jackson's best troops who were guarding it. Turnabout's fair play and Burnside's troops hit the f attacking Confederates in the flank. Porter's troops crawl forward a little more. Porter f pours fresh troops into the line. Hooker sends his troops back in for the final effort. The northern assault was irresistible, but the south made them pay. Although eventually pulled to safety, Longstreet's artillery has drawn their pay fairly today. They will sing songs about the exploits of this artillery group. You can see the Union has suffered three times the casualties of the South. Their army is near breaking. There is time for one last effort. Now a wise Union player would stop attacking at this point, pull back, recover losses during the night, and attack again tomorrow. But I'm opting for a dramatic finale, so the Union will make one final effort. Sumner makes his assault. Jeb Stewart's cavalry rides in to protect the flank. Hooker wants to rally his troops and try again, but there is no one left. Burnside pulls his exhausted men back. Longstreet unleashes his rallied and rested troops and flanks the hapless Union defenders. Mansfield's men attack the flankers in the rear. Having done their job and protected the flank, Stewart's cavalry rides off. Longstreet's attack in the center. The Union's driven back with heavy losses. Mansfield's attack. And finally, this day has yielded no decisive results. The Union army hangs by a thread. McClellan is certain he's facing at least 100,000 Confederates. Late into the evening, he confers with his generals as he attempts to decide whether or not to stay.